Hey everyone, so today we are going to be talking about polarity and there are a lot of things that you need to do related to polarity. One of them is that you need to be able to explain what causes a bond to be polar. So that's the goal we're going to be focusing on today. In some other videos we'll talk about these other goals. So before we get into what polarity even is, we need to talk about a concept called electronegativity. And we may have talked about this earlier in the year, but if we didn't, or if you've forgotten, we're just gonna redefine what electronegativity is. So electronegativity is a property of atoms. It tells us the attraction that an atom has for electrons in a bond. And that is important because it tells us how much the atom wants more electrons. So the best way to understand electronegativity, I feel like, is to look at this image of the periodic table. So this is a color-coded periodic table showing the electronegativities of the different elements. And as the elements get more red, their electronegativity increases. So the most electronegative element on the whole periodic table is fluorine. You can see that as we go from left to right, the electronegativity gets bigger and bigger and bigger, but then it stops at the noble gases. These three are white because they don't even have an electronegativity value. Uh, and that is because they already have a full outer energy level, a full valence shell, so they don't want any more electrons. Whereas fluorine has seven, seven valence electrons, so it really, really, really wants another electron making it have an extremely high electronegativity. And then as we go back this way across the periodic table, these elements don't want to gain more electrons. They actually want to lose electrons. So they're going to have low electronegativities. So let's skip over these definitions for just a second and write down the element with the highest electronegativity is fluorine on the periodic table. The lowest that we actually have data for, there's no data for the noble gases, uh, the lowest that we have data for is francium down here. And then we can see as we move from left to right, the electronegativity increases. Okay, so now we need to start talking about polar bonds and nonpolar bonds. And just to be clear, when we're talking about bonds in this section, we're talking about covalent bonds, which are where electrons, or where atoms are sharing electrons, um, not where they're transferring electrons. So in ionic bonding, electrons are transferred. In covalent bonding, they are shared. And covalent bonds can be either polar or nonpolar. Ionic bonds, we don't talk about polarity with them. So let's actually start by defining what a polar bond is. So a polar bond is going to be a bond that has a positive side and a negative side. And you might be like, wait a second, covalent compounds are not made of ions, so how could they have charges? And that's a good question, and we'll explain that in a second. But for now, let's just write down the definition. A polar bond is a bond that has, and I'm gonna call it a partially positive side and a partially negative side, because they're not full charges. Full charges are created when atoms lose or gain electrons, and that's not what ha what's happening here, um, but it's something kind of similar. So a bond that has a partially positive side and a partially negative side because one element is more electronegative. So this is what causes polarity. This is why we talked about electronegativity. 
So let me explain this a little bit more. If we have an element like, for example, fluorine that has a really, really high electronegativity and it's in a bond with an element like hydrogen that has a lower electronegativity, fluorine is going to pull the electrons to itself. It's going to basically hog the electrons and because it has more electrons around itself, it's going to have a little bit of a negative charge. It's not completely stealing the, the electrons, it's still technically sharing them with hydrogen, but the electrons spend more time around the fluorine, which makes the fluorine more negative and the hydrogen more positive. Sometimes they will show this with like a, an image with colors like this. The red represents where there's a lot of electron density, so where the electrons are spending a lot of time. The blue is where there aren't a lot of electrons. So if this is the atom hydrogen and this is fluorine, the electrons are mostly around fluorine. So fluorine is gonna have this partial negative charge. When we have a partial charge, we draw this little squiggly D. This is a lowercase Greek letter delta. It means partial. So partially negative charge over here and partially positive charge over here. Now, a lot of the times we're not gonna draw this like rainbow colored, um, <laughs> circle shape. So instead, we might just draw something like H and then F and then a little partial negative, partial positive. All right, now let's talk about a nonpolar bond. A nonpolar bond is a bond where there aren't charges because the elements have similar electronegativities. So for example, if we have a bond between, say, boron and hydrogen, those two have very similar electronegativities, so neither one of them is really going to be pulling the electrons any harder than another, so there's not really going to be any charges. So a nonpolar bond is a bond that does not have charges because both elements have similar electronegativities. So this would happen anytime an element is bonded to itself as well. So even if we have an element that's really electronegative, like say chlorine, if we have two chlorines bonded to each other, they're both gonna be pulling on the electrons pretty hard. So in the end, the electrons are gonna be shared equally. So anytime you have an element bonded to itself or two elements that are really electronegative or two elements that are really not electronegative, that's gonna be nonpolar. Um, one more vocabulary word, let's talk about dipole. So a dipole is something that all exists in all polar bonds. And a dipole is when we have a separation of charge. So like a positive and a negative side. And polar bonds are dipoles, they have dipoles. Um, there are other things like with magnets, you can talk about dipoles. So a dipole again is just where there's a separation of charge, a positive and a negative side. And when there is a dipole, we will often draw an arrow with the arrow pointing to the negative side. All right, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So. In fact, right now, dipole notation for polar bonds, again, is where we just draw an arrow above the bond. Let's do a different bond. Let's do carbon and fluorine. So here we have carbon, here's fluorine. Fluorine is more electronegative, so it's going to be pulling the electrons to itself. It's gonna be the reddish element. So we would draw our arrow like this, pointing to fluorine. And then we'll often add just like a little, it's almost like a plus sign. So you can see the carbon is positive. So the arrow points toward the more electronegative element. And then sometimes we will draw partial charges with the polar bond. So we'll draw like a partially positive charge and a partially negative charge. And obviously the negative charge is written above the more the electronegative element.
So based on all of this information that we just learned, you want to be able to answer a question like this. Of these bonds, which one would be the most polar? All of these are polar bonds, but some might be more polar than others. And the way we can tell is by how far apart they are on the periodic table, because the further apart they are, the more different their electronegativity values are gonna be. So we've got carbon and nitrogen, carbon and oxygen, and carbon and fluorine. Since carbon and fluorine are further apart, their electronegativity values are more different. So that's gonna be a more polar bond. And let's just explain how we got that answer. The most polar bond will be the one with the biggest difference in electronegativity which will be the one with the elements that are furthest apart on the periodic table And that is polarity. So now you should be able to explain what causes a bond to be polar. Again, that is caused by one element being more electronegative than another, causing there to be a negative side of the bond and a positive side of the bond.